Thank you for BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you find a wide range of issues. To get started, you can answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp.com matches you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you wish is comfortable, whether it's via chat, text, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you can get the same professionalism and quality you expect in office from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you. More scheduling flexibility and more affordable prices. Get 10% off your, the first month of at betterhelp.com slash nerdlocker. And we will also have the link down below in the description. Humorous. If we um like made a bunch of like small clips that looked like they were from is that recording already? Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Say okay. it. If we made a bunch of small clips that looked like they were from the middle of me talking about the flat earth thing. And then you mentioned in the episode that we actually do like, Hey guys, um, you know, we tried to do this podcast like 20 times already, but every time we talk about flat earth, Harley goes on this crazy tangent. Like, and then you just like put like clip, 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 like of me, like trying to like talk about flat earth. So what you're telling me is you're a flat earther. Oh no, definitely the opposite. Oh yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Nerd Locker Podcast, your entertainment podcast for everything movies, television, video games, and more. My name is Adam. Harley. And today we are bringing you the first episode of some summer craziness, summer randomness, just some episodes that talk about conspiracies and just other things in the news, just some random shit bullshitting around. Uh, so Harley, introduce yourself to the audience and Hi, tell my about name, you. My name is Harley. I'm Adam's brother. Um, I... I'm a martial artist. That's my primary label, I guess. Um, I'm also very into languages and philosophy and a uh, big time science nerd. Yeah. Okay. And we've known each other for about, wow, a long time, almost yeah. 20 years now. And when we were growing up, you were like huge into conspiracy theories, right? Yes. Yeah, what are some of the nut. What are some of those, like, how did you view them back then? And what were some of your favorite ones while growing up? So, you know, when I was younger, conspiracy theories seemed a lot more simple. Um, it seemed very straightforward. Like, I can remember one of the first conspiracy theories uh, that I learned about was, um, what was it that I said to you earlier? The conspiracy theory that I remember from like ninth grade. Oh, that uh, Apple has a bunch of different oh, yeah, that, plans for the yeah, iPhones that, in the future. Yeah, exactly. That Apple ahead of time. made all of their phones ahead of time and like they've yeah. just been releasing them slowly, but they were already made. Like everything seemed pretty simple then. Which goes to design concepts, which kind of had some truth to it, but I can see where like back then we also didn't know what exactly was going on. Everything was just the internet was so I mean, it's not any more trustworthy now, yeah. but you know, it has been progressively yeah, and as far as like what conspiracy theories like I used to like kind of be a part of, um Do you I was, remember any creepy pastas? I remember lots of creepy pastas, but none that were like at all realistic. Uh, I think the one with the Rugrats where like Angelica was going crazy and like all the the babies were parts of her like figments of her imagination. That's pretty messed up. Yeah, like Tommy was a stillborn. Ooh. Uh, Phil and Lil, I forget what it was. Like it, it was just so many different things, and everyone was just a figment of her imagination. Yeah, it was super weird, and it, yeah, it was so crazy. I, it had a lot of plausibility. Yeah. So the main conspiracy theory of my younger time was the nine eleven conspiracy theory, and I think that's like a common one for a lot of people because it seems so plausible like it seems so yeah. real like like everyone wants to ask 
how did we not stop the planes, you know, or like how did the building fall right in its footprint? Cause it didn't look like a building that got hit. It looked like a building that was demolished. Yeah. Um, but again, that's, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. I mean, there's nothing there that's unrealistic or crazy. Like the only thing there is how evil is our government, you know, mm -hmm. like, I, you know, and I think we could all agree that they're probably pretty evil. Um, yeah. They do a lot of messed up stuff. So, And I guess, so the reason we brought you here is because we have done an episode in the past that talked about Andrew Dawson on TikTok. Saw it. Yep. And since then, there have been no updates, no nothing on it. But you had your th thoughts that you contacted me about. And I told you that eventually when we get back to this and we get to out of the whole rotation of TV shows that we yep. talk about it. So like, what are your thoughts on that particular situation in a nutshell? Like not as long as we did go on it, but I'll give you like 10 minutes of floor time yeah, and I'll yeah. interrupt when I need to. Okay. So listen, the, the conspiracy theory with the Andrew Dawson thing. And if you guys watched the video, you know, if you don't, I guess, check it out. Um, supposedly a guy took a video of a giant on a mountain who was, at least several buildings tall, you know, in size comparison to the mountain, um, who then was in the end, apparently abducted and killed by the CIA. I, I don't really know because there is no published cause of death. Um, but that being said, I, I take a huge issue with the conspiracy theory itself as a whole. Um, I think the entire thing is a little ridiculous, um, from right from the start. So, um, my first issue with it was simply the premise of the giant itself. Uh -huh. Like to say that there's a, a giant who is so large that it can be seen from miles away standing on a mountain. Mm -hmm. Like I think people underestimate what kind of size that would be. Um, you know, we're talking something taller than a house, right? I mean, it's huge. And the problem that I have with that is that's uh, simply not something that I think could happen in nature. Um, there's no way that a creature that large could go undetected. Um, you know, I it's pretty big, so I assume it's also pretty old, right? Because it's had to grow if it is a living yeah. creature, right? Um, that being said, it lives on top of a snowy mountain, and large creatures need lots of food. So yeah. where is it getting its food? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I, not taking any sides, but definitely to combat that point is if this is a giant that, let's say, got out of captivity and just seen in that one particular moment by somebody, there is that chance of that. What Only type because, of captivity? Huh? What type of captivity? I don't know. I don't know what, why it would be. Like, I'm looking at it from a, a movie perspective. Yeah. Like, if something got out, kind of thing and someone saw it it's kind of like uh the bigfoot movie harry with the hendersons or something like that like where they take in bigfoot and like the government's looking for bigfoot but they like try yeah. to like hide him and disguise and blah, blah blah like those kind of things where someone happens upon the thing that was supposed to be hidden and so there is that scenario doesn't mean that's like what happened or even if that's true but that is a scenario that i feel like if it is true could have been likely yeah so so the main problem that i have is 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 really this. Okay. So you, if there's a giant, uh -huh. you have to ask yourself, where did it come from? Okay. It's not, it can't be the only one it's mother and father, right? It's mother and father. So then where is the mother and father and where is the mother's Probably mother and father TV. and the father's mother and father like dead probably. Yeah. But, <laughs> but where, like there's no body Brown? of this taller than building sized beast. There's no historical record of, giants of this size being in the area there's i mean the the u.s government hasn't always been the domineering and in, insane take over everything force that it is today i mean y you know but i think that's where conspiracies are being fueled from though like what it, like aside from that so obviously what i'm getting as your viewpoint is that was a hoax essentially what happened for sure. with that? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a pretty elaborate hoax to go as far as like to make your own obituary and stuff like that. Like, don't get me wrong. It wouldn't be the first time somebody did that. Yeah. So I guess like, what is your, 
what's your viewpoint on conspiracies nowadays then like knowing what you did back then to now yeah where is your actually one second i just noticed i like that shirt yeah i know it it looks nice right yeah you don't good yeah yeah, you don't look like anymore okay well that's fair (laughs) you know it uh has turned me from like an a cup to a b cup oh that's cool i can see that yeah nice and tight around my arms my my chest everything where'd you get that from Oh, actually, thanks to Nerd Locker, I got it from True Classic at a discount. <laughs> Use that code Nerd Locker, you get 25% off on checkout. And what did you also get? Some other extra goodies at a good price? Yes, I got an incredible discount thanks to Nerd Locker Podcast. Uh, Use their code at checkout. But uh, True Classic is also an incredibly uh, good company, in my opinion, because during checkout, they were like, hey, do you want another shirt for only like seven bucks? And I was like, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> Not only that, they also have a bunch of nice pants. They have these brand new button uh, button ups, and they actually are made out of the same material as the shirt. So they still have that tightness around the sleeve, and they still have the tightness up here, but also that looseness down below. So you don't feel like you're getting constricted. And they also have socks, underwears, activewear, and hoodies. So if you guys like any of that stuff, click the link down below and use that code NerdLocker at checkout. But Back to how you feel about conspiracies. Yeah. So today, my opinion on conspiracies is that almost all of them share a similar flaw. Mm-hmm. And I think that main flaw is simply the fact that people think, I think some people have this idea that the government is this like hyper efficient, super tight knit machine. And it's not, okay? Like, it doesn't matter what conspiracy theory you're talking about. If it involves the government, it's going to involve a level of secrecy and organization that I think is simply not possible or rational. You know, like, for for example, I'll briefly hit this subject, the Flat Earth Conspiracy. Mm-hmm. You know, for something like the Flat Earth Conspiracy to be true you would have to discredit every single scientist, every geologist, every cartographer, like every map maker. I mean, every single level of the scientific community would have to be full of liars. Mm -hmm. And, And to say that everybody is lying because you heard a guy say that the earth is flat on the internet, that's just not a rational thought. Um, it doesn't have any like, thought behind it like i think people just take it at face value so my problem with conspiracy theories as a whole is that a lot of times people don't think past the the surface it's it's almost like they're going to a bookstore and they're just reading the cover of every book and they're like oh yeah i know what this book's about i know what this book's about and like you know maybe like they come across a science book and they'll like see the title and be like, Oh, now I feel like I know everything about rocks, but all they read was the title. Yeah. Um, so with conspiracy theories, they'll like, like this one with the giant with Andrew Dawson, Mm -hmm. people will just look at it and say, Oh man, maybe giants do exist and then move on with their life and not question for one second, the incredible logistics nature wise that would have to be pulled off to have a giant of that size living on top of a mountain and never be seen except by one guy who happened to be a TikToker. Do you think that people and the way they see these conspiracies, do you think it has anything to do with social media and not even just social media, but media that we take in general? So an example, if someone is as like you just said, easily can see like, Oh, giants exist. Like if they are that quick to jump to that, do you believe that maybe there's some kind of, the reasoning behind that could be linked to what we see now in consumer media, which is fairy tales, superheroes, like the things that we talk about on this podcast, where it's like these otherworldly things where Loki could be a frost giant and everyone's like, yeah, cool. And in real life, if I found out you were a frost giant, I would have to figure out, oh, wow, Norse mythology is real. I need to read up on that. All of the things are fake or all of the things may or may not have happened. Like it just completely changes everything. So it's like, it's, I think easier for people to look at something that they can't explain and easily explain it through means of it just is. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I agree. So like instead of being like, is that a giant? Is it not? Oh, I don't know what it is. It's a giant. 
like I'm just going to dismiss it because it's yeah. easier to dismiss it than yeah. it is trying to prove or figure out what it actually was. Yeah, so there's there's actually in in scientific lit- literacy or language there's actually kind of like a principle of thought on this type of thing or, or this might also be a philosophy thing but um it's the principle that like you should go with the thing that makes the least amount of assumptions you know the least amount of unexplainable assumptions like like for example if andrew dawson saw something on the mountain why automatically assume that it's a giant creature that no one in the universe has ever heard of like like how is that the first the the things of uneducated like we can go into things about our girl baba yanga and (laughs) oh no no her being what the history channel described as a uneducated peasant yeah and how she predicted the future but like the uneducated i guess i don't I, i'm not trying to say andrew dawson doesn't know anything but i'm just saying like from someone that's not really thinking too much of critical thinking it's just seeing something big first idea is like it's a giant because you also think like as a child and you see those kind of things you think like tall people are just giants because that's how you perceive the world so like if you're either in that mindset or never got out of that mindset it is something to give to the un like the unimaginable, the unexplainable. Yeah. A lot of people call, like for example, bringing up the concept of aliens. Everyone sees aliens in different ways. Like some people see them as like the Martians. Some people think that they're like living among us. There's like things like scrolls that you see in Marvel that are aliens, but their interpretation of them. But that might not be like someone might be afraid of like that big head, yeah. the light bulb eyes kind of stuff where other people may not see it that way. They might see like the aliens out of scary movie that like pee out their fingers. Like you never know (laughs) exactly what it is. Yeah. But I, I just, I think society right now likes that content and they'll latch onto that. When something's unexplained, it's so much easier to like get involved with the community, which I, this is what I, I'm not trying to defend conspiracy theories, but against your opinion of like, yeah, okay, we got to disprove everyone's, you know, telling, lies to the entirety of the world but at the same time look at what it's doing it's creating a community amongst people whether or not the community might be set on quote dangerous like i wouldn't say flat earthers are dangerous but they're probably not beneficial Actually, either more dangerous than you than you realize so with that in mind there are other communities though where they're just like getting to know one another or like giving their opinions and feeling heard on these particular subjects yeah. so i feel like there's definitely like a give and take to conspiracies as of this latest like couple of years of social media as compared to like when we were kids and things were just starting yeah so because conspiracy weren't a thing when we were growing up because we had things like nika higa and like julian yeah smith like we had like comedy skits nothing was really like the way it is now where like people just want to have something to talk about or have some kind of conspiracy or have some kind of theory or opinion on something. I mean, we're a podcast. It's all about opinions. Yeah. But we're just really like the majority of what we talk upon are things that are just factual in the news. Look, that's true, but with well, some rumors, but rumors can also be conspiracies depending on how you look at it. Look, let me let me say this to you. Okay, so first of all, you know, I I don't think that conspiracy theory thinking itself is that new or it, like that it's that it's that much bigger Mm -hmm. i think because you mentioned like how do i think that social media has affected this yeah the biggest i think the absolute biggest effect on the conspiracy theory faction is that everyone has a voice now like anybody ever who has a phone can hop on their phone and be like hey guys uh, i just want to say that the earth is flat and uh you know have you ever seen water stick to a ball because like it doesn't, so gravity doesn't exist. Anybody can do that. So then, so then anybody who is not scientifically literate will see that and be like, "Oh wow, like yeah, that makes sense. I don't understand that either. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're right. They make a good point." So now it can spread easier. And there's this really strong um, effect that happens psychologically. Um, it's actually it has a name. It's called the Dunning Kruger effect. Um, it's it's the principle of when 
when somebody overestimates how much they know about something that they don't know about, like something that they know that they don't know about, but they overestimate how much they think they don't, they could know about it. Um, so in an example, like, like somebody who thinks that they understand how gravity works. So they say like they understand, sorry, they think they know the principle of how gravity works so that they're smart enough to say it, it's not real or that it doesn't work. Yeah. So that's kind of an example of Dunning Kruger effect. And the danger here is because a lot of people will say like, oh, well, if somebody believes in the flat earth or if somebody believes in Andrew Dawson's video, so what? You know, that's the question I get a lot is so what? So what if somebody thinks, you know, a conspiracy theory, it's not dangerous. Well, it actually is. It's it. It has effects on the things around it mm-hmm. and on society as a whole, because you got to think you and me like normal people. I'm not normal. Okay, that's fair. Neither but, are you. But we're close to average. Okay. I, I think we're close to average. We're not really on the extreme of any spectrum, I mm-hmm. think. But normal average people don't just hop into flat earth. Like they don't go their whole life thinking the earth is a globe and then go one day they see a video. Oh, I'm a flat earther. It doesn't work like that. It always starts small. Like they see, you know, videos talking about how the food industry is, you know, doing things wrong and that's a conspiracy. And then they hear about like an actual government conspiracy, like Watergate or, yeah, you know, or, or, the attacks um, in, uh, I, I can't remember what country, but anyway, there's been a lot of real government conspiracy theories. So people start going down this rabbit hole of conspiracy theories and they get led to the deeper ones on a path, right? Yeah. So conspiracy theories themselves are dangerous because they lead down a roll down a road that's hard to come back from because you develop this intense, deep distrust for all government and all scientific opinion. Um, And the reason that's dangerous is because then it goes back around, like it comes back around. So once somebody goes down that rabbit hole and by the time they're a flat earther, they're also an anti-vaxxer. And then once they're an anti-vaxxer, like, then then they don't believe anything and now like when you know legitimate sources who are trying to save their lives are saying hey uh you should take the vaccine because we're trying to help you know stop the spread of covid they're like no 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 you're trying to give me autism you know what i mean like it becomes dangerous it's the way of thinking that's dangerous it's it's the fact that people who have no scientific literacy watch YouTube videos and TikToks from other people who have no scientific literacy and think that they know more than actual scientists who have spent their entire life studying their field. You know? Yeah. So it is dangerous. It is mm-hmm. dangerous. And, and and not only is it dangerous in the sense that it could actually get people killed, like with anti-vaxxing, mm-hmm. but it also is dangerous to our progress. You know, when people when people fight to have evolution being taught taken out of schools they are they are literally actively fighting scientific literacy you know they are stopping people from learning how we're here yeah like you know whenever cuz like a lot of a lot of conspiracy theorists especially the flat earth community will make claims such as the earth is not as old as we think you know they'll say oh the earth is actually only 8000 years old instead of 5 billion, you know, and, and, and when you, when you have to fight, like growing up to like, think like, is this true or is this true? That's happening to, to the whole nation of kids, you know, and instead of them focusing on learning those basic tenets of science and then advancing and making everyone's scientific literacy better, they're they're wasting time wondering if it's really even true yeah so you're thinking that in the last and probably not so i you probably have a lot of facts for it so i'm going to agree that in the last what would you say 10 15 years conspiracy have just become 
more ridiculous as time has gone on that like social like the internet itself has just let loose because i feel like there's because at least i think that also backs your point is the amount of access we have to things and the amount that we still don't know but the fact that we know so much more like yeah. there are tons and tons of information that we would never would have gotten back in like mid pre 2010 yeah when you're in grade school and people are telling you like oh they have designs but nowadays like you can see design concepts for the iphones for like the next few years and you're like oh, okay that wasn't exactly not true but it was exaggerated to a point where it's like you're telling me something that may or may not be true but also the way that it's said as well like some people try to do it with a sense of panic or some people try to do it with a sense of uh don't trust them or blah blah, blah. it's like i don't know if it's not trusting as much as like Apple probably doesn't want everyone to copy their plans. Like, yeah. no duh, it's going to be under lock and key. Yeah. Like, if you come up with a new movie, you don't want someone else to go write the movie instead of you. Like, it's the same exact thing. So I feel like back then, the conspiracies were just truth and secrecy, where now it's just no truth at all. Yeah, and, and you know what's... Or throwing it out there for some truth. Dude, you like, know a, what funny, I mean? a funny side note, um, and I heard this somewhere on YouTube, I can't remember where, but somebody mentioned that people think that the entire system of government and science is lying to us about something like the shape of the earth, but Bill Clinton couldn't it's even, a timer. Oh, so no, I mean, keep going. I mean, it's cut. Bill Clinton couldn't even get away with a blowjob. I mean, yeah. I, I, he literally got caught doing that. And they think that the government's going to hide the shape of the earth. You know, you never know. <laughs> but other than that, we will talk more about some more theories. Uh, We'll have an, a couple of things that we'll have in a part two of this. Uh, so stay tuned, guys. And where can they find you, Harley? Um, I don't, I'm not really, I don't have an online presence. That's because he's a conspiracy theorist. He doesn't we want, <laughs> he doesn't want the government to hear and see all that stuff. I don't want him to watch me. Yeah, he doesn't want it all. Uh, you can find me at Amory Photography. You can find uh, Archangel Studios at Archangel Studios Official. And you can find this podcast, Nerd Locker Podcast, wherever you get your podcast. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace.